Now we're going to be heading to taste some Crianza with Victor Urida, who is the CEO of Kune. And he has been with Kune for over 20 years and really seen it all happen in Rioja and um, always one of the greatest values in wine. Thank you for talking to us today. You're very welcome, Ian. And it's my pleasure to be with you here today to present my winery and a couple of our wines. Let's talk about Kune specifically. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're talking about the 2019 Kune Rioja Crianza. And um, it just recently received 92 points. And you guys are located here in Haro? Correct. Yeah. This is the northernmost part of, of Rioja. I, I'd say it's it's the birthplace of, of Rioja. Of, and uh, so, you said about the last 150 years, and that's almost to the date. You guys got an anniversary coming up here. Yeah. Yeah. Just around the corner. You know, it's, it's, it's exciting because... Because uh, with old, venerable companies, things tend to go slow. And I'm part of the fifth generation. Um, and it's it's on us to celebrate 150 years. There's very few wineries anywhere that have been in the same family for five generations. And it's 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 something uh, we're very proud of. So it's, it's my job to present these wines to you. And the wines that we make, particularly the more important wines, the Grand Reservas and so on, these wines are built at last and they need to be better over time. And if you think about it, the good things in life are those that improve over time, yeah, whether it's movie stars, um, homes, cars, novels, movies. Yeah. If they're not getting better with time, perhaps they weren't that good in the first place. And sure, most of the wine that we buy, we drink relatively fast. But I like to think that there are some special wines that we buy and we, we save some time and they need to be better. Or more or worth more money down the road because because they have appreciated in value and that's something that for us is important and that's something we've been doing for a long time that's a cool picture of the winery entrance you know back in the days when i started here you couldn't visit the winery it was, it was shut out to, to, to the public and you see that sometimes in some wineries in spain and particularly in france and and i hate that uh, it's it's the best thing that we have and it, it's part of the allure of some wineries, you know, to the mystique, to keep you out and not let you get in. Yeah, but I, I despise that. I, I think it's anti-democratic. Um, so you've been to see us. I encourage anybody that's traveling to Spain to come and see us as well. That's where you can really see how we work and what, how we do things. And they're not going to see a whole lot of differences from how we did things a hundred years ago. There's the vinification plant where we make the wine. That's where the grapes come in into those vats and where they become wine. This is the sugar because of the alcoholic fermentation becomes alcohol and that's where the magic happens and the wine is made. And if you had taken that picture a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, it would be pretty much the same. It has not changed a whole lot. And I think that's a good thing. Mm. And um, the, the barrel story in Rioja is an amazing one. Um, mm. And uh, the, the, I mean, the, the immensity, I always kind of talk about Rioja as being a wine that's kind of made for the world because the you, you certainly can't make a business out of making wine for your local Spanish population. You've got oh, to make a wine yeah. that is, that is uh, exportable. And totally, yeah. We, we did in the past, and, and we thought about it sometimes, you know, to, to make wine without aging in barrel, to be drunk faster. And we just don't know how to do it. It didn't work. You know, it's not what we're about. It's not how we know how to do things. And we, we learned how to make, over the decades, we learned how to make wine with lengthy barrel aging. And, and that's how we do it. And it allows the wine to age, it allows the wine to travel, and, and it allows the wine to be ready to drink once, once you have it. So it's, it really is suited for export markets. It, it blows my mind whenever I'm in the US or in California that somebody would, it's, I find it astonishing that they would go to the effort to buy one of our wines and actually drink it. You know, 10 billion miles away yeah and that the wine is actually good sometimes even better i find that astonishing it, it never ceases to amaze me yeah so so thank you all for, for drinking for <laughs> buying and drinking our wines because really it's it's incredible there's a there's a there's how many wines are out there there's thousands yeah and of course they're not all they're not all great but but to be able to find something that you that you want and to choose it and and i don't know i think it's 
I should be grateful every day. I am grateful every day to the people that do that and go out and do that for us. That's another beautiful picture of the winery. Again, you could have taken this picture 150 years ago. It wouldn't be too different. Exactly the same. Clear blue sky. That's that's sort of our thing. Can you take us in here on the uh, as we are looking at this beautiful landscape here of of Rioja and the surrounding uh, Haro uh, in the background? Um, and we're talking right now about Crianza. It's kind of the entree yeah. into Rioja. Right. right. What does that mean? Yeah, some yeah. people get rightly so. Some people get confused by by the terminology. Uh, in the New World, in the US and Australia and so on, you categorize wines by by varietals, and that's helpful. It's certainly helpful. You know, this is Chardonnay. This is a Pinot Noir. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, we don't do it that way. We never have done. Um, firstly, because the wines are blends, okay, of different varieties. So it's hard. There might be a dominant one, but it's hard to to, to distinguish them. By varieties plus um we harvest our own fruit they come from our own vineyards they, these are terroir wines it, it doesn't i'm not comfortable just saying it's it's a varietal wine yeah it doesn't speak of the variety it speaks of where it comes from and, and to me that that's important and that's what it should be about so what does crianza mean well crianza literally means to, to bring up and it's a wine that's been raised for a minimum one year in oak barrels small oak barrels of 225 liters it spends a further year in, in a different container. In our case, it's it's a concrete tank, or sometimes uh, an even longer period in, in, in wood. And the, the advantage of doing this, of this particular style, is that we have a house style. The Cuna Crianza is a wine that, regardless of the vintage, right now, you guys are selling the 19, which is drinking deliciously. Um, but regardless of the vintage, the wine will have a certain style and a certain characteristic. So in, in a cooler year, the wine will be a bit more subdued, a bit more mineral. In a hotter year, like 19, um, the wine will have a certain more power in it. The alcohol will always be very similar. We, we, you know, it's got to be within certain parameters. It can't just be one year this way and the other way that year. And, and it's useful because people that are used to the wine, that they, they like it that it's in a certain way. You don't, you don't expect it to change too much. But that's how it should be. You know, year in, year out, you can see the nuances in the different vintages. You can see the nuances in the bottle, how long it's been around for. I had a, a bottle of Crianza from 20 years ago last week, and it was it was, it was was absolutely fine. It was delicious. But of course, it's different from the current vintage, the 19, that you guys mm -hmm. have, have in your store right now. So um, that, that's really what it's about, you know, when you're looking at a Crianza. And of course, this is more complicated than just, hey, it's a Chardonnay, hey, it's a Pinot Noir. But I think it... it 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 rewards the the effort that you make that you, if you look into this a bit more and and you, and you figure out exactly what's behind this and what is behind this indeed um i find that the current trend for pinot noir is is, is super helpful because the the, the elegance and, and the subtlety and flavors and, and the softness that you see with pinot noirs is totally evident in these wines the, the, the main variety that we have is tempranillo and that is that is a not too distant cousin at all of the Pinot Noir. They have a lot in common, and I think the softness of, the, of this wine, the fact that it's just so damn easy to drink without losing any complexity, that's what characterizes it. Uh, I'm tired of drinking wines that are too alcoholic, or too woody, or too sweet. Yeah, that a glass is fine, but then I get tired. I want a glass. I want a wine that I can enjoy, have a glass, and 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 be aching to have another one. I know that's not what you're supposed to be doing, but people don't get drunk on wine. People get drunk on booze. Yeah, wine's not booze. So you can. Well, I shouldn't be saying this, but I think it's you're, you're fine if you're having a few glasses of this wine or, or most wines, in fact. Yeah, wine yeah. is a civilized. It's a civilized drink, so I think we're good. Um, <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, um, I I love um, all that you're saying, and and um, the, the the one question I had for you is sometimes I see Kune with a C-V-N-E and sometimes I see it with a C-U-N-E. What is what is the background on that? We, we like to keep it confusing and keep people on, on the toes. That's When you've been around for a long time, you know, you don't have a neat marketing story that, that, that ties in with what you do. Yeah, but What we have is just the, 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 the weight of history behind us and, and it's a powerful weight, but it's one that I don't mind at all. And in our case, the name of the company is CVNE, and you could see it on the label. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's an acronym. It stands for Wine Company from the North of Spain. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I like that because it's nice and anonymous. You know, I'm here talking about the wines now. In the future, it's going to be somebody else. 
from my family, hopefully. So it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's not, you know, this one man project. It's not, there's no, there's no, there's no person behind it, and which is good. You know, it's intemporal. And it's got the Spanish flag. And astonishingly, we're the only company in Spain that has the flag as its symbol. And yeah. in the US, you have hundreds of companies that use uh, the, the national flag as its symbol. And, and rightly so, you know, we're proud to be American and we're proud to be Spanish. But I guess in Spain, it's just more complicated and people don't do it. But we, we're proud to represent Spain and be its ambassador. And that is our symbol. However, this particular estate, the name is Pune with a U, okay? And what happened is, back in the days when we were founded in the 19th century, we, my forefathers, they went to some, I guess you would call them marketing people, the people that designed labels and said, hey, could you please design a label for me? Our name is CVNE. Yeah, and they gave them what you see below, the, the symbol for Kune. And they went about you know, doing a brand. And they said, hey, this can't be right. You, know, you can't pronounce this with a V. It doesn't, you know, how do you pronounce this? It must, must be a typo. Um, should, I guess they're saying it's Kune, so it must be a U. So let's, you know, let's use a U for the name. And they did this, this Coca-Cola thing, which in fact is older than Coca-Cola. Okay, we're older than Coca-Cola. <laughs> Coca-Cola might have copied us. And that would get me a massive <laughs> copyright trouble. But, but the fact is, we are older than they are. And, and, and there are a few similarities there in, in, in the name. Um, and it, you know, it was a happy mistake because they did this, they did this, this design, they sent it back to us and, and, and my forefathers said, Hey, this is wrong. You know, we're not paying you. You got it wrong. It's, it's, it's not a U it's a V, but, but you know what? It actually looks fine and, and it's, it looks just great. So perhaps we will pay you and we'll, we will stick with it. And it's been our symbol ever since. So it's a, it's a happy, it's a happy mistake. That's very funny. That is good. Funny. Yeah. Well, um, as we talked about this, this is our um, ambassador Crianza for the program, and we were tasting different levels tonight. So we're going to break right here, Victor, and we're going to taste the wine live. And uh, we will see you again, because as I said earlier, this process of picking which wines we're going to show tonight, we wanted to show a great ambassador wine from you. And then we're going to close out our night with uh, your Imperial Grand Reserva. So we'll see you in a, in a few moments. Very good. Okay, so we'll break here, Hannah. Um, and if, Victor, if you have any photos or other things, we can also put a few things into the slide. Sure. I copied just... Ines, on, on, I just emailed you beforehand. I copied her and and she's she. if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask her, okay? She could give you whatever you want. I think, I think we sent some pictures already anyway. But um, I'll make sure we we do it right. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, when I'm tasting it live, I'm going to talk about how this wine is uh, 1995 um, in our store and really a, a, a solid value. And Perfect. It, Thank you. I yeah. hope that was all right, Ian. What I said. Yeah. Oh, you were passionate. And I loved it. It was super good. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah, we go again now, 3327. We have climbed a serious ladder here with this real hot tasting, going from Rosé to a Reserve Blanco to a Crianza to a set of Reservas. And now we're going to talk again about Cune and Grand Reserva the Imperial 2016, which just received 98 points. And to do that, we welcome back the CEO, Victor Rita, um, family member, fifth generation. Thank you, Victor, for sticking around and helping us. Um, let's talk about Imperial Grand Reserva 2016. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Um, I don't know if, if Imperial is, is the best wine that we make, but it's certainly the one closest to my heart because it represents um, what my forefathers wanted to achieve 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, when they wanted to make a super Rioja. Now, of course, everybody nowadays makes a super burger, super Napa, super everything. Yeah, But in those days, it was just, you just did what you did, and, and that was it. You know, the, the concept of thinking, I don't care about the quantity. If it's less, it's less. I don't care about the cost. I just want to be able to produce the best that I can from my best vineyards. That, that was a sort of revolutionary idea. And that's what they set out to achieve. 
And I think that's what they have achieved because this is a wine that we don't produce every year. We only produce this wine in vintages that we consider excellent, okay? So we skipped quite a few. And if you taste different vintages, what you need to be seeing there is a consistency in, of quality and, and style. The wine, when you smell it, it, it is the most, it's the most beautiful wine. It, it has a churchy nose. Uh, and you're going to say that's nonsense, but, but really that's what it is. It smells like an old Gothic church from Europe. Uh, <laughs> it has a velvet texture. And again, you're going to think that that's, what do you mean? That's nonsense. You know, you don't eat velvet, but it has a velvet feel in your mouth. Um, it has low alcohol, but at the same time, it's persistent and it stays there. And, and to me, the, those are the hallmarks of, of great wines, wines that incur in contradictions, but at the same time can achieve something great. These, these are, this is our harvest from last year. As you can see, that's the, the, the sorting tables for the fruit. That's, that's where we make the wine. That's Maria, the winemaker. The previous image had Irene, She's the person in charge of viticulture. A very feminine company. And I think that shows in the wines. Uh, the best tasters of a female, I think they're capable of detecting nuances that, that, that we can't. And, and I think that shows in the style of the wine. You know, again, I could get in trouble for, for, for <laughs> gen genderizing the wine. I, I apologize <laughs> for doing this, but, but I don't know. I think um, there's nothing wrong in, in, in saying that, that women are more elegant than men and, and that this wine it has elegance as as its as as its backbone because that's what it should be about you know and the 16 vintage it's a it's a very special vintage and it, it had great rating great points and and of course you know th those only go so far they're, they're only helpful in pointing us in the right direction but the fact is the 16 vintage is one of the best that we've had in a long time uh, particularly nowadays with climate change you're getting hotter years um uh, freak weather patterns uh, that result in, in in very small harvests and and, and with just the complicated situations at harvest time. Um, the sixteen was was a very good vintage. We had a cool winter with plenty of rain. We harvested late. The growing season was very long, and th those tend to be the better years. Uh, I mentioned before, you know, we skipped bad years. Thirteen, we skipped. We skipped twenty o three, twenty o two, twenty o six. So we do skip quite a few years, but the 16 is, is, is one to remember, and it's one that's going to age fantastically. So I hope, I hope you enjoy it. You get your chance to drink some of it. Um, now, now, this wine is an, a different wine, a different vineyard selection. Is that what Imperial represents? Yeah, it's a different everything from Kune. Yeah? Kune we produce every year, and it, it comes from our own fruit, but we also buy some fruit from, from farmers that have been working with us for generations, and that will go into the Kune. Uh, and that is a big difference with Imperial. Imperial only comes from our own vineyards. In fact, it comes from our vineyards in three different three different villages. That's a picture of one of them, a beautiful picture of, mm. of the main vintage, the, the main, um, excuse me, um, the main vineyard that goes into Imperial. It's called Torre Montalvo. It's it's below the, the it's in the foothills of the mountains of Rioja, of the northernmost part of Rioja. You can see the menacing uh, clouds behind it. Um, the, the, the mountain range keeps the rain away and, and makes sure that, that we don't have that you know the, the fruit is sufficiently stressed to produce um, small quantities and small berries. At the same time, if you look at the soil, you'll notice it's pale yellow. These are limestone-based soils. They're very poor. And again, they produce the yields are absolutely tiny for the production of this wine. Mm. And that results in, in very concentrated fruit that, that we can tame afterwards and, 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 and turn it into something magical. So it's a different estate. It's produced in very, very small amounts. And it, it comes from the same village in, in the northernmost part of Rioja, but they are two distinct estates. And you can see that clearly when you taste the different wines. Beautiful. Um, these vines are all untrained, untrellised. How how old are, are we talking about vineyards? In, and in, this particular vin in this particular vineyard, these were planted in the early 70s. Um, these are dry farmed. Everything that we have is dry farmed. Now, of course, it, it's a bit reckless to do that. Um, but if you can, I think if you can dry farm something, it's going to be better than if you, than if you irrigate it. The, the plant has the obligation to dig down deep for nutrients. It's going to withstand better droughts. It's going to live longer. Um, it's going to be careful and pause in how, in how it produces the fruit. I think, and it's going to be more balanced. Of course, if you have very dry ears, 
Um, it might be impossible to do this and, it, and you know, there might be no balance at all. But if you can survive with dry farming, as we have done for the last 150 years, I think it's, 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 it's worth trying, even though the results can be bad and it's much harder work, but it's much more rewarding. So yes, and it's goblet trained. We don't, we don't buy the new techniques. Uh, we do things as they were done 100, 200 years ago, and they work just fine for us. That's a, that's a good picture of the seller. Now, when I see Bordeaux people selling now, the 22 vintage, I think, wow, you know, that's extraordinary. The fact that they're able to do that. You know, I, I, I don't even know what the 22 is going to be like. You know, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be great. But the wine, the wine isn't even in bottle yet. You know, we, we aged the wine in barrel for up to three years. And once that period of, of, of aging is done, we bottle it and we keep it in bottle for quite a few more years after that. So these are pictures that could be Imperial 17, 18 or 19 that have been bottled. But this is going to sit there for a few years before we even uh, consider shipping it. And again, I think that's good. I think it's the fact that the current vintage now of Imperial is a 16. Um, that's what, four, seven years, uh, mm. three of which have been in barrel. And the rest, the other four have been in bottle. The wine is not just ready to drink. It's silky smooth. And, and it's just right. You know, it's a cliche, you know, where people say, hey, you know, buy a couple of bottles, drink one now and keep the other one for the future because it's going to be better. But in our case, it's 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 a cliche that is actually true. You know, the wine will be better over time, but it's actually quite good now as well. So, and uh, do you have a favorite vintage in the history of of your time or your life of tasting Rioja? Do you know, I think eighty seven is 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 my best vintage, but that's because it, it it was my teenage years and I had such a good time that year that it was just just my best year ever. I'm hoping my wife isn't listening to this. But it, it was my best, <laughs> and the eighty-seven Imperial is is fantastic, and it's drinking amazingly now. Um, but it has done for a long time. But I suspect, you know, my my perception of that year is influencing my what I think about about that as my favorite year. But it, it, you know, in truth, every vintage is is different with with Imperial, even though it follows a certain style, and and they change and evolve over time. And th there's no bad ones. There's some that I like less, perhaps in, in the hotter years. I don't know, maybe 2009 um, is powerful and I prefer, it, you know, with a bit more finesse, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. I think, uh, you know, I, it's hard to choose a favorite. They're all very good. The 16 is fantastic, but the 17 that's coming up next year is, is, is amazing as well. So I don't know. We need to do, we need to do a, a vertical here and to open lots <laughs> of bottles and figure out what's best. That sounds, that sounds like a good, yeah, I'm, I'm your man. Um, I, there you uh, go. <laughs> I, I, I tell people all the time when you want to, drink a birth year wine and i was born in 1968 and my friend was born in 1967 so anytime i see old bottles of rioja from like the 60s available at a re relatively reasonable price um and quite frankly um they're 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 they are a, 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 a appreciating quite nicely uh, but uh if you bought them 10 years ago you you were stealing you know history um, because the wines were not that expensive. People and, didn't know about these wines in the past, and they are, when they're good, they're phenomenal. And I don't, I don't just mean from us. Yeah, I mean from other estates, other other venerable estates from Rioja. If the wines are being stored properly, um, they, they can, they can, it can be an extraordinary experience. Yeah. Imperial sixty eight is actually one of my all time favorite wines. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't produce any sixty seven, so I'm sorry about that. You're just gonna have to stick for the, the sixty eight. <laughs> But yeah, I, I recommend that so much to anybody, to any wine enthusiast out there. If you see old bottles, old vintages of Rioja, and if you can't grab them, if, if they've been stored properly and you see that the fill level is good, go for it. And you, you, if the wine is good, you will not be disappointed at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was great to spend some time with you. We're going to taste your wine now with the group. And uh, I have a feeling they've already tasted it and drank it by this time, but we're going to talk about it. And uh, we, we really appreciate hanging out with you and getting to learn about Kune and uh, the differences here. And um, it's it's just a real pleasure to be able to produce this with you. And thank you so, for your time. Ian, you're very welcome. Pleasure is, is entirely mine. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks you very much. Bye -bye. See you in November. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, Victor. How did, okay. you, you're happy with that? You're okay? Yeah?
exceptional and, and I'll, I'll send them back so you can see the final results because we're going to take your artwork and everything that you sent me and fix some things up we i saw some some things that we need to improve That'd be great so. no problem at all if you need anything at all don't hesitate you know you've got people in the emails i just sent and that they can they can get whatever you want well, your team and i hope everything works out well yeah i look forward to seeing you over here that'd be terrific you have a great team and uh, thank you very much i hope support. lucia looks after you well that's very important uh, she is she is amazing she's a force and uh, we love her so thank you very much perfect lovely all right Ian. cheers thanks very much and see you soon hopefully bye-bye cheers bye-bye